My name is Jordan Mead. I am a resource specialist with Summit County's Open Space and Trails Department. It's December 1st, 2021, and I'm standing here on the Rock Island Road, which uh, divides uh, Reach A of the Swan River Restoration and uh, the Reach B uh, Restoration site, which you see behind me. It's quiet here today. But if you've been here a couple of months ago, you would have seen a lot of heavy equipment, uh, backhoes, uh, front end loaders, bulldozers, and heavy dump trucks out here um, excavating the new channel and, and installing this, this really great river corridor. But before I get into more detail about the process that we went through this summer uh, to restore Reach B, I really just would be remiss if I didn't uh, talk about our partners, both our funding and, and technical review partners. The National Fish and Wildlife Federation uh, provided funding through their Restore Colorado grant for Reach B, uh, as well as the Colorado Parks and Wildlife uh, division who provided two different grants, uh, $270,000 through their Fishing is Fun program, as well as $150,000 through their Wetlands and Riparian uh, Restoration grant. So those were our, our really big funding contributors and we've had numerous other partners on this project including the Blue River Watershed Group, uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Colorado Division of Trout Unlimited, the National Forest Foundation, and of course the town of Breckenridge who is a co-owner with Summit County uh, of the land that you see behind me where we've restored the Swan River. So the restoration construction activities really got started here uh, about the middle of July in 2021. Uh, we had final designs which were reviewed uh, and accepted in May and June of this year and, and we we were able to mobilize equipment in July, and if you had see, if you saw the um, state of this site prior to our restoration activity, it was, it was just a big gravel flat, basically. Our contract gravel contractor came in here and, and was able to mine a lot of the gravels and create the large stockpile that's uh, still on site, waiting to to be shipped away. Um, and that really set the stage and the groundwork for bringing in that those restoration crews. Um, so once we had all the equipment here on site, uh, the first step in restoring the river is ex doing a rough excavation of the river channel. And that, kind of, that started on the downstream end, uh, just below the Rock Island Road that we're standing on now. And the contractors worked from the downstream end to the upstream end, roughing in that channel. So just getting the water to flowing in, in the channel um, and defining that corridor where the river is going to run. Once they had worked all the way down from the downstream end to the upstream end, the next step was to install a rundown channel. And the rundown channel is uh, angular riprap that is um, going to catch spring runoff and direct it into the new channel from upstream areas which are yet to be restored on, on private property. So that's kind of a catchment basin. And we don't expect to see flows in that rundown channel most of the year. A lot of the, the water that you see flowing in the stream behind me is actually running subsurface and is, uh, pre presents itself as groundwater and seeps into the stream naturally from underground. But in the springtime, when we have larger flows, that rundown channel is going to serve to catch uh, the surface flows and direct those surface flows into the new channel. So once we had a rough channel and a upstream connection um, to the rest of the, the riverway, uh, the next step was to install a new bridge on Rock Island Road, which we're, I'm standing on right now. Um, this provided the connection from reach B on the upstream end to reach A on the downstream end um, and also is creating a really good aquatic uh, organism passage. So now fish and, and the aquatic invertebrates that they feed on will be able to move freely from the Blue River up into the Swan River and from reach A into uh, the newly created uh, reach B. So this bridge is a really uh, key component to creating connectivity in this uh, river system. Following bridge installation, um, Keith Martinez, who was the main operator for TZAC Heavy Equipment, who, who provided all the equipment and did all of the, the earth moving here on the site, um, 
he started to install our in-stream habitat features and, and Keith is a real wizard uh, on the excavator and really is able to uh, work by feel. The river gets all turned up and turns into this very turbid kind of uh, muddy water and so you can't really see what you're doing when you're working down there but Keith is able to by feel with his bucket of his uh, excavator install all of our in-stream habitat features and and those features include our uh, riffle pool glide sequences so there's 32 of those riffle pool glide sequences um, in the bends of the newly created uh, river channel those riffle pool glide sequences um, the goal with those is to mimic natural morphology of reference streams uh, in similar uh, habitats and at similar elevations in Colorado. Um, so we're trying to mimic that natural morphology. Uh, beyond the riffle pool glide sequences, uh, they installed uh, 120 boulder features in, in those bends as well, which serves to break up the flow of the stream and create uh, low velocity refuges for fish to hide out in when they're uh, resting in the stream. Another really key feature of, of in-stream habitat uh, was our woody uh, debris features. So over 500 pieces of large woody debris went into the stream both in the channel and along the banks. So that brings me to our next step was, which was bait stabilization. The bank stabilization is usually, mostly is compacted cobble. So we took some large rock and, and were able to compact it with the heavy machinery and then add in a lot of those woody debris features to help stabilize the bank when flows are high so that there's not a lot of uh, erosion and scouring from those high flows. And by putting the woody debris features in, we're adding some diversity in the fish habitat near the bank and out into the stream as well. And so when you look at uh, a lot of our bends, you're gonna see um, large pieces, large of wood and logs sticking out at all sorts of angles into the stream. Uh, and again, those are to stabilize the banks and to serve as uh, fish refuges and shaded areas in the stream. Following bank stabilization, the kind of final step of the restoration process this year uh, was erosion control and the initial seeding of the site. So uh, within about 20 feet of either side of the new banks that were formed, um, our partners at Western States Reclamation uh, seeded the, those areas with a riparian grass seed mix and then installed a biodegradable coconut husk uh, erosion control fabric, which is staked down with wooden stakes uh, to ensure that the soils that we placed along the banks um, doesn't get washed away during our first year of spring runoff and allows those riparian grasses to germinate. It holds some moisture and so it's just really creating that environment uh, that'll allow the revegetation to start to take place on, on this site. Um, for the areas further from the stream, um, those areas were drill seeded and hydro mulched. And so uh, Western States came in with a tractor and put a different seed mix, an upland seed mix, on all of the upland areas that are um, outside of kind of that near stream riparian zone. And the, the hydro mulch is gonna act as a germination medium. It's gonna give them uh, higher moisture retention and, and allow those uh, grasses to, to take a hold. Um, prior to us coming back next year to finish this and put the finishing touches on Reach B. So those were the steps that we took this year for uh, restoring Reach B of the Swan River. And next year in 2022, uh, TZAC Heavy Equipment and Western States Reclamation will be back on site. Uh, that'll be in the late summer and early fall, August and September of 2022. And We'll do a more extensive revegetation effort uh, using woody species, so those uh, shrub and tree species that would be native uh, to the riparian and near riparian upland areas uh, in this ecosystem. The method that we're going to use for that is both uh, willow, potted willows and willow stakes. 
which will be placed on the outside bends uh, and that will add additional stabilization and start to add some shading to those near bank stream areas uh, which again provides some fish refuge uh, in those uh, shaded areas. All of the woody vegetation that is on site currently uh, was transplanted during the restoration effort from right here on site. So any area where vegetation was being disturbed to uh, make way for the new channel, we preserved as much of that woody vegetation as we could and transplanted it uh, here. Following uh, those willow stake and potted willow installations on the outside bends, uh, we will be planting 70 riparian and 40 upland planting pockets. And these planting pockets are basically small depressions about 10 feet by 10 feet, uh, which were excavated to about a foot in depth and then backfilled with topsoil. Um, those depressions and topsoil, are, again, are gonna help to retain more moisture so that we can avoid having to do irrigation and enhance the survival of those, those planting pockets. On Reach A, the woody species are kind of just scattered across the landscape uh, as individuals. And one thing we saw there was that there wasn't enough moisture and a lot of those individuals, once we started watering them, started to die back. So by planting these dense groups, we'll have natural moisture and uh, nutrient retention and that will eliminate the need to irrigate and will allow those plants to really adapt to the conditions that are here on this site uh, so that they can sur survive over, over the long term uh, in the natural conditions without additional watering. And so those planting pockets will contain uh, blue spruce, uh, trembling aspen, Engelman spruce, uh, and some of the shrubs will be uh, big sagebrush, uh, antelope bitterbrush, and along with other woody shrub species. And so that will be the final step in, in finishing this restoration effort. So by next year, we should see this whole site with the grasses that were seeded this year coming up, as well as all the woody vegetation that we'll be planting next year. And so we'll have a really complete uh, project here and it'll have a good finished look uh, with new vegetation growing, uh, hopefully across the entire site. We want to plant our uh, woody species in the fall once they've gone dormant. That way there's not the shock of moving during the growing season from the nursery environment to this natural environment. So by planting them in the fall, they'll have a winter to lie dormant and adjust to the conditions here on the site. And then the next spring, they, they'll be able to establish themselves and start a new growing season in the new environment. In Reach A, we've seen a lot of brook trout uh, as well as mottled sculpin. And during the restoration phase, we actually were seeing fingerlings of brook trout starting to make their way into Reach B before we had even finished the, the, the restoration process. So we fully expect that in the next one to two years, we'll have uh, a measurable brook trout population and the sculpin usually will start to come in a year or two after that. The sculpin are uh, bottom feeders so once the detritus, uh, that natural uh, dead material starts to build up on the riverbed then the sculpin will start to move in and they're kind of that um, scavenger species that's going to feed on the waste from other species and on an uh, dead material on the bottom. So it just takes a little bit longer for them to start to move into these reaches. Um, we will be doing five years of monitoring on Reach B. That's required by the Army Corps of Engineers um, with our nationwide 404 permit, which allowed us to work in the stream. We're required to monitor for five years, um, but we have added on additional monitoring criteria so that we can get a good idea of um, how well our revegetation is uh, taking hold, how, what the growth rates of our woody species are, and how the river's morphology is changing over time. And, and we're really looking to partner um, with academics, with research labs and universities to try to get some monitoring, long-term monitoring going here on this site. Um, and look at it in a more scientific um, 
formalized way so we can have data from this site and that data gets used and published and can be available for other folks who are doing the similar types of restoration to be able to reference what we've done here and what our successes were and maybe what some of the um, less successful parts of this restoration effort were and to, to help inform their activities.